Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range to sight in our hunting rifles for this year. It's time when the leaves start to fall, it's time for us to get ready to do some hunting. Deer season's right around the corner for us on rifle, but right now, statewide, we can hunt predators, coyotes. Some of you may call them coyotes. And if you look it up online, both are pronoun uh, correct pronunciations. It's a regional dialect thing, and I was just raised calling them coyotes or yotes. So um, the rifles that we're gonna use this year are a little bit out of the ordinary in terms of what we've normally used. Now I have used 6.8 to hunt in the past, and I'm gonna show you that rifle. Uh, I have a different optic on it this year. Uh, we are looking into doing a lot of hunting with the uh, 6.5 Grindle. And the 6.5 Grindle is kind of a competitor to the 6.8. So we have two 6.8 rifles out here this afternoon. Then we have a 6.5 Grendel rifle that we're gonna be shooting. We're just gonna confirm zero. We're gonna confirm that zero with the hunting rounds we plan to use this year, just to make sure everything's spot on because the last thing you wanna do when you get into the field is find out your gun's not shooting where you want it to. So the, just real quickly, we'll give you a more detailed breakdown here a little bit later in the video. But here's my old tried and true baby. The only thing different is the optic on it. This is an LWRC 6.8 rifle. This gun was built around the 6.8 SPC2 cartridge. And when I say it was built around it, the 6.8 will run in a standard AR-sized rifle, but it is the, the overall length of the case is just a little bit longer than your standard 5.56 round. So LWRC actually made a, a rifle that was built around that cartridge in that slight overall di um, length difference. And they even have their own special P mags. And these magazines will not fit into a standard 5.56 magazine well but you can get 30 round magazines, 20 round magazines, and of course, five round magazines, which I like, especially for hunting, because it makes for a very low profile rifle with, uh, without a snag point being there. The can I've always had on this rifle is a, a Griffin Armament Rec E7, and again, 6.8 SPC. On top of it, I have, this is the new scope I'll be trying out this year. This is a Primary Arms Platinum Series Optic. So I know a lot of you guys associate primary arms with budget optics. Well, they also have some very high-end optics. I believe this one was made in Japan, but um, very clear optics has their very popular ACSS reticle in it, which is also illuminated. And this is one very nice piece of glass, guys, for the price. Now, the price is not your typical primary arms pricing. This one's gonna get you into the $1,200 to $1,300 price range. And I know a lot of you guys don't associate $1,300 rifle scopes with primary arms, well, you might want to start getting used to it because I'm telling you what, guys, this isn't the first uh, rifle I put this scope on. I'm thoroughly impressed with it, uh, and it is illuminated. And so that's my 6.8 rifle. This is nothing new. I've had this for a couple of years now. The rifle that is completely new this year, which we're going to be comparing this to the 6.8, this is a BCI defense rifle. This is actually one of the prototype rifles that we did for the Mac Special Editions, and we may actually offer this later, but it's just basically a rattle can look. It is Cerakote, we did do this at Copper Custom. You'll see there's some netting in, you know, mixed in with the paint and stuff like that, but it's two-tone brown. And on top of it, I have a loopholed Devo, and this is a really cool little setup. Now, when I first ran across these things, I misunderstood their purpose, now I know their purpose. This is actually a pretty cool setup, but the Devo is a magnified optic with a ballistics drop uh, calculator built into the reticle, and then we have the LCO, which is the loophole high-end red dot sight. So these together allow you to have both a red dot sight and a magnified optic all in one, which all you have to do to change from one to the other is just look down or look up. Pretty neat system, 6.5 Grendel. It has a Faxon barrel. On the end, we're running the OSS uh, 7.62 suppressor. This is a Helix 7.62. And um, yeah, everything else is pretty much bone stock from BCI. It has a BCI bolt and carrier with that fax and barrel, which is a standard offering from BCI. We've been working with them at Copper Custom to push them in the direction of the 6.5 Grendel because we're big fans of it. And now they are actually making these rifles in 6.5 Grendel. And I believe we actually have a few of them in stock at Copper. The nice thing is, is you can also just buy a barrel and a bolt and you can convert your existing AR-15 to shoot 6.5 Grendel. Now this rifle, Jason's rifle, which is a nice lightweight little rifle, this is a Barrett 6.8. On top of it, we have a, a primary arms. This is a one to six. Now this is one of their more affordably priced optics. This one's gonna run, uh, I think it's like $269 or something like that. It's less than $300 for the optic. It's a one to six variable power, has an ACSS reticle in it as well. And um, 
and it does have an illumination dial on it. We have this mounted to the Barrett rifle with a Midwest Industries quick detach scope. And then out on the end here, we have a Griffin armament. And I believe this is their sportsman can. This thing's rated up to 300 wind mag, I believe. Um, and this little guy is plenty of volume for the 6.8 is nice and, and quiet. Uh, this is a direct gas impingement gun. Uh, the BCI that I showed you guys is a direct and gas impingement gun. And the LWRC 6.8 is a gas piston gun. All right, so that's everything. We're just gonna start this video off. We're gonna talk about confirming the zero, talk a little bit about the ammunition that we're using, and just basically have a fun day at the range getting these rifles all set up so we can hunt Bambi and get ourselves some predators. I've always had really good luck with these Hornady 6.8 SPCs. These are the 120 grain SSTs for, in terms of a hunting round. Uh, I've used 6.8 to take deer in the past. And uh, I just, I like the cartridge. The only thing that's a little bit odd about it is the fact that it's just a little bit longer in overall length. And that's what prompted me to pick up the LWRC 6.8. Now the 6.8 is an incredibly well-made rifle. Again, it is a gas piston gun. I'm usually a DI guy, but this has a heavy barrel on it. It has a twisted fluted barrel. Um, and it seems to shoot really, really good. Now keep in mind, we're shooting hunting loads, guys. So these aren't match loads. If I can keep it in the one inch or so arena for in terms of accuracy at 100 yards, that's all I'm hoping for. And that's what this rifle's been consistently giving me for a couple of years now. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, charge this rifle up. I'm just gonna shoot five shots through it and make sure this thing's completely dialed in. Now I do have the Illuminator reticle and I'm actually using that right now even though it's, it's broad daylight with this AC SS reticle, which is a great reticle for hunting or for, you know, if you want to use it in a fighting rifle, it's a really, really great reticle for that because it's a very fast, easy reticle to use, but it's not a precision reticle, all right? So you don't want to use it for long range shooting and trying to shoot for teeny tiny groups. It's not going to help you very much. This Platinum Series scope it goes all the way down to one power and goes all the way up to eight power, um, you know, and it's quickly adjustable in the field. So if you see a deer, you can quickly make your magnification adjustment and boom, you're on target. All these guns were zeroing at 100 yards. All right, so should have, I put one in the chamber? I did, all right. Yeah, let's just pop a few rounds off. I do have the Recce 7 here on the end of the rifle. Run my stock a little bit longer on this gun. All right, so it looks like, so what we've done guys is we were shooting these rifles earlier, getting them zeroed out with the hunting ammo, making sure everything was good. And then we let them cool off. We want a cold bore because when we go out and we get in the deer stand, we get into the blind waiting for the, the coyotes, uh, the, the barrel's gonna be cold. So we wanna see how it's gonna shoot on a cold barrel. Typically as the barrel heats up, you're gonna see a slight variance in the groups, which way they're gonna move. Some will go up, some will go down, some will go left, some will go right. On a truly, truly good match barrel, you shouldn't see much um, deviation in those groups, but it's just a reality that you need to check your cold bore accuracy on your hunting rifle. Don't shoot it all afternoon, get it nice and hot and think and adjust it to a hot barrel because if you don't confirm that zero on a cold barrel, you might miss that critical shot and wound an animal versus kill it. All right, so it looks like on the cold barrel, it looks like it's just a little bit south of center. Um, I'm gonna let it cool down again. I'm gonna give it a couple of clicks up and see if I can't get it perfectly centered at 100 yards. But other than that, it's shooting pretty darn good. I have the brightness setting set to seven on the reticle, and that's just so I have some contrast on the reticle from the black target that I have downrange.
seems pretty zeroed. What I will say, this Devo could definitely benefit from an Illuminator reticle. Right now I'm shooting at a black pasty. It has a very, very fine uh, dot for aiming. It's not a cross here. It's, it's more or less, it's very much like the ACSS reticle, which I'm used to, but even with that, I'm turning the illumination on so I can see a defined dot against a black target. This, um, this Devo does not have illumination, so uh, it's kind of hard for me to get it perfectly centered on the little black KC or butch, bir Birchwood KC targets I think we're shooting at. So, you know, it would be nice to have this illuminated, but I can always fall back to the red dot. All right, guys, I've got a Barrett Rec 7 here chambered in 6.8 SPC. I've got a Midwest Industries quick detach mount and a primary arms 1 to 6 with an ACSS reticle on it running a Griffin Armament Sportsman Suppressor. And then also got a Gemtech Suppressor Carrier in here as well. Now I'm going to try some Hornady Black 6.8 SPC 110 grain VMAX. And uh, I got a few Pacey's down there and do about a five shot group and see what we get. On the left shoulder. See how that turns out. It's interesting to note that I'm using 6.5 Grendel 10 round magazines for this. This lower only accepts like standard AR-15 size magazines. Like this one's a specific 6.8 SPC mag that holds 28 to 30 rounds. But if you got 6.5 Grendel mags already laying around 10 round, works just fine. Where I've normally used the 120 grain SSTs for the 6.8 Hornady, I'm going to give this new stuff, it's called Black, and it's from Hornady as well. Uh, this is from my friends over at Freedom Munitions, and this one has a 110 grain VMAX bullet in it versus the SST, and we're just going to see how it compares to the other round in terms of its zero because it's a 10 grain lighter bullet and it's a different bullet type. So I have five rounds loaded into my little special five round. Uh, P mag. <laughs> I love these little stumpy guys. All right, and let's see if we can get a group going. Huh, that's interesting. It actually has the exact same hold. I mean, it, it uh, where the 120s were just about a little less than an inch low on a cold barrel, on a, a semi-cold barrel, this one put them in pretty much the exact same spot. It's pretty zeroed out. I mean, so I could use either one of them with this setup right now, which is kind of nice. I may actually take the blacks out into the field and see how they perform on a deer. I've never used one. Uh, actually shooting a deer with it. So that's pretty cool. I may actually try the black out this year just to see what happens. That was fun. I know a lot of you guys have seen us use this rest before in our sound meter testing, but that's not really what it's designed for. This is designed to be a field rest, much like a hog saddle, except I feel this is a much superior product. I've been using it now for about a year. You've seen it here on the channel for quite some time. I've not really taken time to comment about it until now. 
And so what this is, it's, it's made by Kofjager Industries, which I know that's probably gonna be very hard for you to spell. So I'll put it in the description down below. It's hard for me to spell. But you can also go to reaperrest.com. It's reaper-rest.com, which will then auto forward you to Hofjager um, Industries. And they make this setup, which is basically this mount right here. This is just a standard SLIK uh, tripod. You can put it on any tripod you want, but that it fits onto the head of a standard camera tripod. I have the added accessory of this mount here so I can put a camera to record my own hunts. So it has the ability to auto level this little thing, it has a leveling ball in it, you have a, a lever here. You can level out your camera and you can get it set up so it's looking the exact same place your rifle is with your, your rifle set up in the rest. And so you can just hit record and record your own hunts. So I wanna try that out this year. I've never really used that. I bought it with the extra little mount, but I haven't used it yet, but that's what that's for. Otherwise, the rest just looks like this. It's just an angular piece that has this very thick rubber coating over these fingers that are somewhat flexible that pinch the rifle. You can see with this knob right here, you can pinch the rifle tightly. And here's what's ni nice about the rest. Notice no matter where I turn it, it stays. Even if I go down, the gun stays. So I can set this thing down really low to the ground, get into a chair, get into a blind, and I can get up on my gun, I can move around, and when I'm done, the gun stays right where I want it. So it's an extremely, extremely useful tool. It's a nice shooting platform. You can brace yourself, you can push into it, pull the gun back into yourself and get a fairly steady shot. It's much better, I found, than shooting off the cross sticks or shooting off the monopods, which I've, I've hunted with in the past. This is tough to take into the field. You don't want to carry it around everywhere. Those little collapsible monopods I still use if I'm gonna to have to walk a long distance. But this system here, I absolutely love. So for around here for deer hunting and things like that, you're gonna see me using this Reaper Rest. All right, so I got my 6.5 Grindle BCI rifle up. I'm really, really interested in the Grindle, guys. 6.8 is just something I've known for many years. Uh, I probably will use this rifle to take a deer this year just to do it. Um, the 6.8, I already know what it does to deer. But, you know, that's why I built this rifle and I'm really excited to use it. I love the fact that I'm able to run one of my favorite suppressors on it, which is the OSS can, which means I don't have any back pressure. So I'm not gonna have goofy issues with the 6.5 Grendel, which I've run into those issues. This is like my third 6.5 rifle. Um, and it's, it's a lot like a 308. It can be very finicky when you overgas it. This way with the OSS, I don't have to worry about it. So basically you would set it up. You can set it up as high or low as you want and then you just get on the gun and we're just shooting at a challenge target. It's about 75 yards away. And so when I, if I'm standing here and I see the animal, I can quickly bring the gun over and I can use a red dot sight. And I'm on target with the red dot sight at 75 yards. As a matter of fact, I just put all those shots into a little group, just like that on a steel target. It's really, really handy. I can also have the option to do uh, magnified optics. So where my red dot is, when I just look down, I have my magnified optic, but at 75 yards on a deer or something like that, I can take a quick shot on him. And score hits. So this setup for me is really, really cool. I do have a white light on here. This is after you hit a deer and the sun starts to go down, most of the times, it always seems like you wind up getting that shot right at sunset. And that's one of the reasons I run this Sunto uh, Traverse Alpha watch. This thing gives me an audible alarm to tell me that, hey, sunset's here because DNR will have a field day with you if you're shooting deer after the official sunset time. It's good to have an alarm, set it on your phone, have a watch, something like that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, this, this white light is so I can actually go out and look for the animal because many times when you hit them they're going to run off into the bush somewhere and die so the rifle's nice and light set up i really like this lightweight fax and barrel the oss can is one of my favorites because if i'm going to hunt without ears that first shot i know from extensive testing of these cans i can take a shot and i'm not going to deafen myself as i would with just a conventional high back pressure can where i get that pop out the ejection port All the sounds downrange. Back here, silly, silly quiet. I love my OSS cans for that reason. So, there you go, guys. That's just a really neat setup. I'm really excited to get this into the field. I was gonna use it for predators only, but um, 
yeah, I'm definitely probably gonna try to take a deer with it. I'm so undecided, you guys know that. It's like I'm, I'm bouncing around because there's so many cool options. And the reason I'm bouncing around is because I've had to go out of state to hunt with six, eight, and center fire rifle calibers like that. We just got it here in Indiana, and there's still some goofiness with our law, but on private property, we can use these calibers now, and we have 190 acres that we have access to, and that's why we're really, really excited about deer season this year. Coyotes, they're, they're fair game year-round on private property. So anyway, all right, let's let Jason do some shooting with his rifle. All right, so I'm going to give this, uh, this rest a try using the Barrett. This will be my first time trying this thing out. Well, all I can really say is I have got to get me one of these. This is too cool. You can really just move this thing anywhere you want to. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed coming out to the range with Jason and I to uh, do our side in for our hunting rifles this year. It's pretty exciting for us here in Indiana simply because uh, we've been at you know, war basically with the Department of Natural Resources, the DNR. They've not wanted us to be able to hunt with centerfire rifles. Our state legislature has been trying to give us centerfire rifles. And so every year the rules change because the DNR is always looking for loopholes to try to stick it to the gun guys. And so we're just going back and forth. So right now, as things currently stand, the rifles we've showed you in this video are legal and private property, which fortunately is where we hunt. So we're really looking forward to it. And that kind of accounts for my bouncing around back and forth, trying to pick a rifle. I'm just like a kid in a candy store right now because I have this whole smorgasbord of firearms I can choose from. So this gun right here, my BCI, which is my prototype Mac rifle with the prototype uh, paint scheme, I think I'm gonna run with this. Uh, this afternoon was really a, a deciding factor for me. I still love my 6.8, I'm still gonna use it. But I'm gonna try this thing both with predators and with deer this year. Got great loads from Hornady. Um, and I wanna thank again our guys over at Freedom Munitions for keeping us well supplied in that ammunition. But uh, this, this setup is really, really cool with the Loophole Devo and the LCO Red Dot Sight. Um, now that I fully understand it and have used it in, in its intended purpose, which is for predator hunting or just hunting in general, Jason and I both are really impressed with it. At first, I thought it was a CQB type device, and it's not. And in that role, it would really kind of suck. You got this big thing hanging off the side. But for what we want to use it for, for hunting, I'm really excited to see how this works this year, and I'll keep you guys posted. Guys, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to swing by our Patreon page, which the link is down below, and become a Patreon supporter. YouTube does not like gun channels. It does not like airsoft channels. It does not like conservative speech channels. It doesn't like knife channels. They've crushed us monetarily. Literally every week I'm fighting account strikes now just to stay on the air here on YouTube. So they've already taken our money away trying to get rid of us, but that's why we've decided, and we, I say the firearms community, a lot of us are showing up over on Patreon. If you go by, become a follower and a subscriber there, it tremendously helps us. We are now 100% fan supported, viewer supported, and we greatly appreciate that. Over on Patreon, we do sorts of all sorts of cool stuff. Freedom Munitions gives away $200 in ammunition every month. Two lucky winners will get $100 worth of free ammunition forged from Freedom who does our shirts like this one. Does it take Glock mags? In the case of today's firearms, no, they don't. But if you wanna pick up uh, a shirt, you can pick that up from Forge from Freedom. We have that link down below, but we also give away five of these shirts every month to our Patreon supporters. We also have blowout deals from Copper Custom where we sell stuff well below map, and we're trying to get stuff out to the other Patreon guys out there on GunTube to help them as well with products from Copper Custom. We want you guys not just to support the Military Arms channel, support all those content providers out there that you consume their content and enjoy watching their channels because they can use the help as well. Guys, also feel free to swing by and check us out at Copper Custom. It's our online store and uh, lots of great products, great prices. And if you want a rifle that looks just like this one, we can make you one. Thanks guys for watching. Thanks for all those years of support and we'll see you guys at the range.